Okay, I got another first order differential equation and it doesn't look like the variables can separate um, or anything like that. So we're gonna use that integrating factor like I did in the last video and hopefully I didn't confuse you. Okay, so um, what do we got here? Well, here's our differential equation and the first thing we wanna know is, is it, is it in the form of, you know, our, I don't know, our form, you know? Uh, so it's not. But all we have to do is just move this 2xy over, and it looks like we're good to go. So um, let's go ahead and just do that. And that'll just be plus 2xy, and then it'll be equal to 5x. So, ever, so all the numbers match over here. Um, you know, our, D, our, our derivative looks the same. I have 2x will be my px, y is the same, and then q of x, well, that's just. 5x. Okay, so um, remember that integrating factor I'm looking for that is e raised to the integral of p of x dx. So that will translate into e raised to the integral of 2x dx. Probably another one we could have just done in our head. Okay, integral 2x, that's just, you know, x squared. So v of x is equal e to the x squared, okay? So this this right here, this is what we'll be multiplying uh, our uh, differential equation by, okay? So let's see here. Why don't I just go ahead and get another color? Ooh, that marker sucks. That one's got a good point on it. Okay, so e raised to the x squared Remember, I'm just multiplying it all the way through, plus e to the x squared, 2xy is equal 5x e to the x squared. Okay, so that's all I did. Okay, now if we look at it again, um, let's see here. What do we what do we have? Um, well, if if I if I look at this uh, e to the x squared power, if I if I were to take the derivative of that. Um, I would end up with this right here, wouldn't I? Okay, so I think I'm going to call this f, and this would be f prime, okay? And then same thing happens if I look at y, if I took the derivative of that with respect to x, I would have, well first of all, it would just be 1, and then implicit differentiation, then I have to tack on the dy dx. So, so if this were g, or if, oops, if that were g, then this would be g prime. Okay, so what I could probably do is just rewrite this left side as y, make sure I get it all on the page there, y e to the x squared is equal to 5x e to the x squared. Okay, so so if I were to actually go and take this derivative, I would use the product rule, I would use implicit differentiation, and I should end up with this. I mean, it's possible that this could be on the left and this part could be on the right, but you know, addition, you can you can swap you you could you could swap it any way you want. Okay, so on the next page, I'm just going to go ahead and write what I've already got right here. And just for your knowledge, I always I recycle all my paper. I know I use a lot of paper, and as students, you know we all use a lot of paper. But I, I always recycle it. I take it to uh, the university, and they've got a big little bin there, so I don't want anyone to think I'm wasting paper. Okay, so here we go. All right, I just I just rewrote that. You know, no big deal. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate both sides. So I, I'm going to take, uh, the, well, I'm going to integrate the left side. I'm going to do it with respect to x. I'm going to do the right side. I'll integrate with respect to x as well. And of course, if I integrate a derivative, it just cancels itself out. I use c sub 1 to designate that, you know, I'm going to have a constant over here too, so. Um, let's see here. Well, looks like I have to do a little u substitution. I'll let it be equal to x squared, so du is equal to 2x dx. 
I mean, I'm not going to go into this too deeply. You guys know how to do U substitution. So let's see. That at 5 comes out. So then I'm just left with DU. So let's see here. Okay, um, so there we go. And like I said, I'm not going to spend too much time on the U substitution. That was like some Calc 2 stuff. Okay, so what do I want to do? Next, I want to move this count to C1 over. So I'll just subtract it from both sides. It'll cancel out. And the next thing I want to, I mean, if I have an unknown constant minus another unknown constant, I just get another unknown constant, right? So I get Y e to the X squared. And that's equal to 5 halves e to the x squared, and we'll just say plus c. Um, next thing I want to do, remember differential equations, okay, you know, we're, we're given, we're given, you know, I mean, something like this, you know, differential equation, our goal, at the end of the day, we want to hunt down, in this case, y of x, so let's just get y by itself here, okay, so if I divide both sides by e to the x squared, e to the x squared, e to the x squared, I should get y is equal to what, 5 halves plus c. Maybe it's a little easier to write it like this, to the negative x squared. Right there. So that's that's my that's my this is what we call the general solution. Okay, um, just basically because it's it's somewhat uh, generic, you know. This this C, I mean, it could be anything really. So there there are a couple ways we could get rid of the C. We're not going to worry about it now. We'll we'll cover it later. But you know, initial value problem is probably the easiest way. And then there's you know, as time keeps on ticking into the future, um, other ways will come up. So. Um, yeah, you know, hopefully, hopefully this is a little, little better. Um, like I said, you know, they're, and eh, they're not too bad. So maybe I'll do an initial value example next. Okay, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.